Okay, Vaughn back again for a minute. I had to grab another camera because the one I was using stopped. Seems like when they get to a half tank of battery, they just quit. Uh, they used to go down to more like quarter left or something. I think they get hot too. They're in this are in the sun. I think maybe it could have shut down because it was hot instead because it was out of battery. But and I have it plugged in, but they won't keep going even though they're plugged in. They I guess they take so much juice for the camera. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I don't know. There's probably just one puff of air left in here, but there's a there's a what looks like a jet right here, and I was trying to no, there's no air. But if you blow in it, it comes out right here. This vacuum line that's uh, it's connected to the choke. So I think maybe it's really not a jet like I was thinking a minute ago. I don't know if you heard me talking about it or not, but. Uh, I think it may be a uh, this thing right here goes comes out right here it may come out in other places too I don't know but I think maybe it's the air temperature sensor for the choke and you know it would be a good spot to get the air temperature to tell the choke what to do open and close and this vacuum line is part of the choke right on the choke housing so that's got some actually I kind of would have thought that was where it got its temperature but uh, I don't know. Unless it really is a jet and the choke actually controls that jet. Never, I've I don't, never heard of anything like that, but not that I would necessarily know either. So, everything I can find, every orifice, every hole is blown out and it seems to be passing air through it. So, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna order a kit because, yeah, I can put it back together and it might work. And, uh, and it could just be more horrible trouble, or more trouble really soon. And I, during that, when the, my camera might have been down, but I checked these bolts that hold the bottom plate on, they were really loose. It took nothing to make, I already tightened them up. They still come loose good. I gotta get a really big screwdriver and tighten those down good. And, uh, oddly enough, there's two holes with no screws in them, and I don't think I left any out, I think. I never had them, I don't know. There's one, two, three, four, five, six in there. I do know it ran good for a long time after rebuilding it, so it wasn't like... I mean, they're obviously screw holes. I think maybe this plate might have also fit another carburetor or something. I guess I can verify that by seeing if one of those screws will go in there. They're very loose. So, I don't know why. That screw will go in there. You think maybe I? I, I usually never lose screws. Not important. I don't know. There's no screws in there. Maybe they fell out, but I didn't see any in the. Uh, wow, as loose as those were, it's entirely possible that they fell out and landed in there. Oh no! If those two screws fell out landed in the intake manifold and laid around in there until they decided to get picked up and pulled into through the you know to a valve that would be my noise that I had the other day that has gone away holy crap I'm gonna have to investigate that these are all a little we're all a little loose just eat too easy to come it's a gasket yeah I think let me open the hood yeah. Oh, I think there's a thing in the middle that would probably stop that, unless it goes this way. Let me look while I'm thinking about it. Probably have to climb up on the ladder, but... Okay, if the carburetor was on, be like that. No screws are left or right, passenger to... Let me go get my...
I'll carry the camera over there and show you. This is a, should be a fresh battery. I should be able to unplug it. So this is the front of the carburetor, and they're left to right. Or is it the other way around? Yeah, front of the carburetor. Screws are right and left. Did I show that or was I shaking around too much? Right and left. Wasn't paying any attention to where I was aiming. Kind of excited of a scary discovery. And that plenum, I'm going to call it, on the intake manifold. Right there. Is uh, front to back. So those screws wouldn't be stopped from falling. Let's get up there. I looked already, but let's look, up, let's look again right now. Let's see. A light. A light. Nothing like there. This thing is going nuts on me. It's too flexible. Okay, now you got some pretty good light on the left one. But you see, if they got enough suction in there to suck them on through, then they wouldn't be there. They'd be up there at the valves. And you know, they're short enough. Could be possible they could have sucked on over through one of those ports intake ports <sighs> but so then have to go towards the back or towards the front I can't tell what I'm showing now I did look in there I'm, I remember now I saw it again I was like oh yeah I looked That magnet that I have, that I broke the other day, might. <sighs> Sorry, trying to readjust it where it'll stay. So where it'll stand up on its own, I mean. I'll get that little more. What's left of that magnet, antenna magnet. Try to stick it up in there. Get that magnet. One of those magnetic screwdrivers, too. hot and tired but this is something I would want to know if I can figure it out. It's a limited manifold so it's not going to stick to it. Intake's getting in the way. Of course, it's a very bendy area down there, so I can't really get that far. And I don't sure don't want to lose this down there. That's why I put it on this. Squeezed down under these vice grips pretty good there. I don't think I can turn the corners. Oh, it nearly broke again. Dang it. Woo. I was afraid it was going to break again because it was bent right there. There. Well, it looks like a port there. Uh, that must be... It doesn't go up into here. So that must be 
Well, like I said, that's hot. I remember that's really hot right there. Manual chokes actually bolt in right there, so. Wow. Yeah, they go in there. So that's a hot exhaust gas right there. So one. I can only really find one that I can go into. They're too close together, I think. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, I guess. I guess that's how they go. Been too long since I've had an intake muffled off to have really much room memory of what it all looks like. It's an Edelbrock. I don't know what type it is, but it's an Edelbrock. And I think that's a Sprint Bore Holly, I believe. Not sure. I don't know. I don't remember. It's a small block, so I don't know. Maybe that maybe those are really for big blocks. This is a pretty strong magnet, so I would think if it was anywhere near... It's not really... I don't have anything else that could go in there. Screwdriver wouldn't go that far. If it was up... If one of them was up... Man. Nearly broke. It broke again. Nearly fell off in there. Piece of crap. I won't squeeze. I'll squeeze it just to keep it. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it like it is. Not going back in there again now. So I can't. If there's anything in there, it's not the where I can pick it up. But uh, now I know there's a possibility of something that could be in there. And of course that means major. Valve damage if it went on past the valve, possibly past the valve would be piston, you know, breaking pistons. So now that I just didn't see that noise being noise because even you know I've had plugs not not firing before years ago. I can't remember. It doesn't sound like it anymore, but uh, I remember hearing no noise like that. I don't really remember hearing a noise just like that before ever. I've had a spun rod bearing and I had a, a rod go bad and, go, and end up slinging through the block. I was up in Colorado with a 256 banger and my 64 panel truck. And I was in Colorado. I was living in the van in 1975. I was living in that van up there for about two months. Through July and September, uh, July 4th to about September 15th or something like that. Two and a half months, I guess. And anyway, I was on uh, the road to Mount Top, going trying to get to the top of Mount Pisgah, the tallest auto road in the United States. And it started knocking about halfway up, and then I looked at it, couldn't figure out what it was, and I just thought instead of going back down, I stepped trying to go up. And uh, I was 18 years old. Anyway, boom! Went up and opened the hood, and immediately, uh, as soon as I looked around the engine, I saw that. Hole inside the block and a piece of the rod cap laying on the frame. So I knew I was in trouble. And then later on, my one of my 454s spun a rod bearing, and that's a lot of, you know that noise too. Right? You'll know something's wrong. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to put that back up higher because that could end up deciding to, you know, like in the heat of heat the fuel expand or something it could just keep on <laughs> get a get a uh, siphon effect and start draining the tank it's up high but still I have had that I've had them keep on dripping forever and ever and had to hold them up high okay uh, that's a scary thought and it could be an answer to that mysterious noise problem I'm afraid uh, I mean, the only way I can know is pulling the intake manifold. And of course, it would be easier to do that now than uh, waiting until I put my carburetor on and, dry, and run it and have the noise come back. Man, I don't want to do that. The thing is, I may have got all freaked out last time when I rebuilt the carburetor and somehow figured out... I'm going to look through all my things I've saved on the computer. Maybe I made a note to self. I don't believe I was making videos and I don't think I had anything to make videos with. 
one good thing about videos that can help you <laughs> remember things. I went back through, well, it wasn't these projects, but some other projects I did the last few weeks since I've been out working on stuff. So I'm back and watch, watching through the videos, and then I saw things that reminded me of things I forgot or things I'd done, exactly what I'd done or how I'd done it. So. <laughs> Sorry, I walked off on you, didn't I? In the middle of the sentence. You definitely want to figure this stuff out. But, wow. I'm not happy. One more thing to worry about now. So, let's carry this in while it's unplugged. I don't need to show the carburetor anymore. I'm it all day long. It's getting really hot. Okay, so, uh, back inside. Plug this up for a minute. Now, yeah, I, I, none of these videos are being uploaded yet. I haven't had time. I've been trying to get them uploaded. As I've gone, I've been uploading them to letting the phones upload them to Google Photos and then I just transfer them from Google Photos to YouTube. So, and then I try to rename them and make them all make sense, you know, if they just have those stupid vid, and num vid number, you know, it doesn't, well, all those videos I've got up there that I haven't renamed, they nobody's ever watching them. They don't have a title that has some sort of description, you know, I think get to go by as a thumbnail. But, it takes a lot of time to do all that. So, uh, that's a possibility, that's actually, I, it seemed familiar when I saw, I saw those screws missing yesterday, I didn't even mention that, I don't think, because I thought, I think those were always gone, but they could have fell off between the last rebuild, they could have fell off years ago and never gone anywhere, but maybe they finally went somewhere. Could have been kind of up in the manifold somewhere. Never had it off since I had it rebuilt in '92. Now I didn't take it off, but somebody else is going to do it. But those, uh, if those screws fell off in the center around in there until they finally decided to get sucked up into the valve chamber. That would uh, definitely account for all that noise. It sounded like it was right there in the head. It was on the passenger side that the side that I replaced all those plugs in, where I found one broken half and broken half in my hand, cleaning it with a paper clip. It had to have been just almost broke. I think it was dead because it does run a little noticeably better now. But I was hearing that like sound like a valve not not opening and closing right when it was making noise, and it's not doing that now. It's just not running good, and that would make a lot of sense to all the goop that I found in the carburetor there too. And the way it was running bad, and you know, I and, it, I, and suddenly stopped uh, running at idle, started dying, and was doing that every time I started it with idle brakes. That group got up in that hole and messed that up. And then, and whatever's causing, yeah, whatever's causing it to just dump. It's like fast dripping faucet. It just, it just blurps out feel instead of spraying out feel when you give it a little gas. And if you give it even more and get the secondaries to open up, it'll almost die and then it'll start revving up and running. Secondaries are working pretty good. I mean, primaries are not. Yeah, the carburetor needs rebuilding. There's something really wrong in there. I, I think it's more than just clogged up holes. That's a, I don't know, maybe that goop in that hole was causing the vacuum to be all wrong and causing that. Because, uh, you know, I do know they work, they're not just a pump. The vacuum pulls the, uh, I mean, they don't have a, the 
only pump in is accelerator pump. That's a little diaphragm pump. The rest is vacuum pulling the. Uh, that's why they call it the Venturi. The Venturi effect is what, when the vacuum pulls the fuel through it. You know. I think it's very intricate, and I don't know exactly how it all works. I used to, I've read on it before and watched some videos years ago, but when I was really, really young, I read about it. You know. Anyway. <coughs> it went away it don't mean that the problem's gone, it just means whatever's making another ship, you know. Could have fell back into the manifold, but then if I go revving it up, it might suck it back in there, or it could have fell down on the piston and just, well, it seems like it'd be making noise. As a matter of fact, if it fell on the piston, it might be, get squished between the piston, smashed between the piston and the cylinder, and the piston cylinder might let the rims up in the top of there. Of course, that would probably break the piston. Scratch the heck out of the cylinder walls and ruin that. So, as much as I hate this turning into a bigger and bigger job, I guess it's a blessing to get some ideas here that maybe can prevent it from destroying the engine. I don't want to say it, but I think maybe I'm going to have to pull the intake to know whether or not there's something in there. At least I'm about halfway there. And at least this is not one with a whole bunch of extra junk on it. Just get the plug wires out of the way and stuff. A few other wires. Distributor come out. And, uh, get it come on. Whoa, that means another week at least doing that and rebuilding the carburetor for me. And I've been working six to eight hour days on it too. Starting around seven, seven thirty. So how long is that? Can you think? Let's just say I started at seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. Usually come in two, two, thirty, five, six, seven. And usually I take thirty minutes to an hour for lunch. So that's six hours for some of the days I've worked at. Probably mostly six. And the reason I generally been well I've been quit because I get really tired because I'm you know not used to working, but also because it's just so hard. So I really want to get it back to where I can drive it to. That old van needs a lot more work than this does, even at the, even at what I'm running into. It's got electrical problems still from my uncle working all the wires up in it. He rewired most of it, all of it I guess, but like when you turn the heater on it blows the fuse that goes to the ignition and the heater. You know, really odd things like that. I tried to drive it in the winter one time and what happened I didn't mean, I made it down to the end of the street and took me 30, took 10 to 30 minutes in the cold to try to figure that out down there at the end of the street at the stop sign. And then uh, it smokes. Uh, it doesn't seem to have blow by, so it probably, I think it's just valve guard seals. But that's a lot of work, but one thing you can set in the seats, you can take that doghouse off and set in the seats inside the van and work on it. And if it was hot weather, I can plug in that air conditioner in the back. It's a regular window unit and run the air conditioner <laughs> to work on it if I wanted to. Of course, I'd be in and out of it constantly getting cool. But okay. If I was working on it in the heat, I'd do that. <laughs> anyway. Oh. All right. Later, when I decide what else to do. Bye.